It's time for the Coach Groves Show, where we sit down with the head coach of the Darlington Tigers football team and talk about all things Darlington School football. Now we go live to Matt Davis and Ian Griffin, who are standing by with Coach Wayne Groves. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Coach Groves Show, where we talk all things Darlington football with the head Tiger himself. Uh, We're glad to have you join us on our Facebook Live channel or YouTube channel. Uh, either way, we're glad to have you with us. Matt, we're coming off a of bye week. Uh, Darlington's had some time to rest up. We're excited to talk football. Absolutely. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and turn the camera over to the coach. And coach, how you doing, man? Very good. We're glad to have you in the studio again today. And so I thought we'd start this first segment by going back. And now it feels like it was kind of forever ago in a lot of ways. I'm sure it does more so for you than anybody ready to get back out there and, and play in another game. But let's go ahead and talk about the game up at Christian Heritage that took place a couple of weeks ago, Coach, because it was another successful night, and you guys picked up the shutout. 35-0 to was the final score, so tell us your take on the game. Well, we really challenged the kids uh, after week two to obviously to get better. We want to get better every week, um, but we stayed on them about, you know, playing perfect technique, eye discipline, all those little things that they ended up turning first downs or to not first downs into – stuffing folks and put them in second long situations so we really preached that to the kids and and we did an excellent job we played our position much better more technique sound and so we got out of what we wanted to get out of it from that that perspective and coach obviously you picked up the shutout and i know one of the things that you guys do every week is set some goals not just picking up the win but some specific goals that you like to see happen on in either side of the ball so let's talk defense specifically what were some of the goals that you had for the the previous game, and uh, how many of them did you reach? Well, we reached seven out of our nine goals. Uh, the number one goal is to win, obviously, so we got that accomplished, 35-0. Uh, the second is we want to keep them underneath 100 yards rushing, and, and we did that, uh, negative 13 yards rushing for Christian Heritage. So we played great downhill football, great fundamentally sound defense in the front seven. Uh, and then we want to keep them underneath 150 yards passing, uh, which at this day and time is a pretty – Difficult, good old to do, especially when teams are throwing it, you know, 40 and sometimes 50 times a game. But we held them to uh, 113 yards passing. So achieve that goal. We wanted, to, we wanted to get two turnovers every game on defense. We only got one, so that was one we didn't achieve. Um, we want to keep uh, no plays bigger than than 25 yards. We achieved we achieved that one, um, and then uh, four or less missed tackles. We for, unfortunately had 10 missed tackles, so. Uh, you know, we only accomplished seven out of our nine goals for, for last Friday, which, which really, if you can accomplish five out of the nine, we feel like we played pretty good on defense. Absolutely. And then, of course, on the offensive side of the ball, one of the, the good things that happened in the game, you had several guys that ended up scoring. Of course, Demarion Floyd scored. Uh, Wooten scored on a pick six, which was super exciting. Uh, Sammy Koncheski had a score. Talon Shirey had a couple of touchdowns. So you were able to distribute the ball to your playmakers and some explosive plays happened in the game. Well, our offensive staff, you know, Coach King and then Coach Louderbill, Coach Abels, they do a great job. And, and, and we want to make folks defend the whole field. And so, you know, multiple formations and motion, motions and, 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 and getting Demary in the ball and getting Hendricks the ball and, and getting Tal on the ball. And then Sammy, you have to defend him on, you know, running and passing. So we feel like that uh, with those guys – it's going to give folks some problems when they start watching the film. So, Coach, you know, now that you're three weeks into the season uh, and you, you're installing these new systems, new offense, new defense for these kids, I know they practice it in spring and summer, uh, but how much more does the playbook open up as these games go on? Well, you know, we have our base stuff, and, uh, you know, Coach King does a great job of trying to keep things simple but to give folks different looks with motions and shifts and different formations and stuff. And so even though the base stuff will be the same every week and we'll pick and choose out what's good for this week based on the opponent. But the, you know, the main thing is, is, is we're going to give them a couple of wrinkles that they haven't seen each week, something that they haven't had to prepare for. And so we always want to see kind of what their adjustment is if they move their chess piece out of their base defense and then have a plan to attack them, you know, otherwise. And coach, I want to talk about the honeymoon bakery icing on the cake player of the game. That's something we always look forward to. 
and oftentimes it's a, a challenging decision. And again, you had a great team effort this past week, so we had some really, you know, a tough decision to make to pick our winner this week. But Talon Shirey was the victor in terms of the prize. He had an 18-yard touchdown run, also caught a touchdown pass, scored a couple of times in the game. That was on the first play of the third quarter. And at that point, you guys would lead the game 35-0 to and come away with the victory. So tell us a little bit about his performance in the game. Well, you know, Talon's, you know, we talk about, seems like we talk about Talon every week, but, you know, he's a, just a tough, hard-nosed kid. He practices the right way. And, you know, he, we talk to the kids all the time about making the plays at practice Monday through Thursday, and that earns you the right to make the play on Friday. And he's one of those guys that does that. You know, he's killing it out there at practice. He doesn't, he's leaving, he's pouring sweat. He's, he's dog tired every day. So it's just a product of that, of what he does Monday through Thursday that, that you're seeing on Friday. And so, yeah, he impacted the game, I think, in all, you know, and, and catching the ball, running the ball on jet sweeps, and then return yardage. He's had, I think they said, 202 yards in total yards and, and two touchdowns. Of course, we did a great job on kickoff returns and punt returns last week. Those guys are really bought into doing that. And so that really set us up with some opportunities to get some, some easy scores. And, Coach, of course, I think one of our favorite segments has become over the last couple of weeks is talking about the black shirts. We really have enjoyed talking about that. So tell us about the black shirts from that, that right. particular black week. Black shirts for Christian Heritage, and I'll look at my, my notes since it's been a, a week now. But for, for offense, we had two offensive linemen out. Um, and for us, you know, when we play guys both ways, that's like having four starters out. And so we had some guys that stepped into some positions that don't normally play there. Uh, Stephen Moore had to play center. And uh, our offensive line played really well. And, but we thought him moving to that and, and playing center for only three days and being able to, to, to grade out pretty well, we gave the offensive black shirt to Stephen Moore, who's a, who's a junior offensive lineman. Uh, on defense, same situation. A kid that plays normally plays defensive end got moved inside to play D-tackle, and that was Connor Ellison. And he played really tough and really hard in, inside, and, and so he got the defensive black shirt. Special teams, I couldn't decide on, uh, on two of them. And it could have went to multiple kids, actually. But um, I gave two special teams. I gave one to Miles Twyman. I think he made just about every kickoff tackle. Um, he had four tackles on, on, on kickoff. And uh, he's just flying down there, ripping and, and, and not getting blocked and, and making great plays on kickoff. So he had, but then on some of those big returns, on the kickoff returns and on the punt returns, Sam Wooten, our Mike linebacker, is blocking his tail off. And so he had a lot of great blocks. I think he had we got it for three really good blocks that kind of helped spring talent on some of those good returns. And so we gave him the, the special teams black shirt. And then on Scout Scout O, uh, Cam Burns is a sophomore uh, tight end, uh, you know DB, and and so he did a great job simulating their tight end, their little H back. And so Cam Burns got the Scout O, and then Jake Millmeister, a young sophomore D line and O line, he he. Play. He's he's young and he's kind of green behind the ears, but he but he's a pretty strong kid and he gives us fits on the scout team on on defensive line and so Jake Millmeister ended up getting the scout D black shirt. So, I coach. I know we were talking about it before we got started with the show. The bye week's kind of a catch twenty two. You know, you get a chance to rest up, maybe get healthy, but you were saying it gets you out of rhythm. So so how have you approached the bye week and and how how has that been an advantage for you uh, going into this week's game? Well, any time we, we have a bye week, we are going to try to use it to our advantage. And so uh, when we have a bye week, we're going to do it always the same. We're going to have Monday. Monday is going to be uh, a kind of a grinded out practice, and it fall, fell on Labor Day. So we tell the kids we're going to labor on Labor Day. And so school's out, so we bring the kids in early at 830. And so we have our position meetings. Uh, we, we didn't have any film to watch because we watched all our film the previous Saturday. But we get them out on the field, and we have a, about a two-hour and 15-minute practice. And I try to have them out of there by before 11 o'clock. And so we were able to do that. Um, and then our Tuesday practice was normal after school. Wednesday was about an hour and a half practice. Gave them the varsity Thursday off. The JV went and played Mount Zion on Thursday and, and did a great job. We ended up winning that game 21-6 to on Thursday. And then all the players had off on Friday. And the coaches, we went to, to Northwest and, what, and scouted Northwest and uh, North Murray last Friday. And that sounded like it was quite a game. I know we're going to get more into that a little bit later. But I know North Murray built a big lead early in that game. And then Northwest came storming back and ended up winning the game. So yeah. that had to be quite an atmosphere and interesting place to see a game this past weekend. Yeah, they have a really good atmosphere up at Northwest Whitfield. And that, I think that's kind of a rivalry game for them. I mean, I don't think those two schools are about 15 minutes apart, you know, Chatsworth to, to Tunnel Hill. So um, it was a packed house. And so we got there and, you know, 
it looks like North Murray is going to just run away with it. And in the in the third quarter, they get up 28 nothing. North Murray's got a phenomenal quarterback. He's about 6'3", 215, and he can throw it and run it. And he broke about six tackles and went about 60 yards to go up 28 nothing. And so this is about six minutes left in the third quarter. And I'm like, all right, guys. And we saw – I kind of saw enough what I, what I thought I needed to. Um, I said, all right, guys, you know, this thing's pretty much over. Let's go back home. By the time we got back to Rome, we're checking the scores, and Northwest Whitfield come back and won yeah. uh, 38-35. And so we're like, how the heck did that happen? Of course, we got the film the next morning. We started watching, and we're like, okay, well, this is how it happens. It, and you wouldn't think that it, it could, but that just shows you if you just keep playing hard, you never know what can happen. In, in, in high school football, some crazy things have, have happened, and coming back from a 28-point lead is pretty special. Well, we're going to get into that in more detail a little bit later on in the show. We're going to take a break real quick. After this break, though, when we come back in, we're going to get to the Getting to Know Coach segment. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about podcasts. So that'll be a fun conversation and more coming up. This is the Coach Grove Show on WLAQ YouTube and also Facebook Live. We're glad to have you with us. Glad to have the coach with us today. And we'll be back in just moments. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection. Or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome. Riverside Toyota in Rome. And the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit Riverside Auto autogroup.com. All right, we welcome you back in. This is the Coach Grove Show here on WLAQ YouTube and also our Facebook Live. And we're going to just go ahead and jump into our Getting to Know Coach question of the week. And this one, Coach, is... Tell us about some of your favorite podcasts. I guess I should probably ask you first, do you listen to podcasts before I ask this question? But um, well, I'm not a I'm not a huge podcast guy. You know, I just you know, but I do listen to podcasts and I do have Spotify and, and I do listen to some things. But I guess when I listen to podcasts, I listen to I, I enjoy Joe Rogan experience. And so he's always, you know, I know he gets off the wall sometimes with political stuff and and everything, but when he's got you know, these, these great nutritionists on there. He's got uh, former Navy SEAL guys on there and he's got professional athletes on there. And then, and so I enjoy hearing some of those things from really highly successful people in, in, in different areas of, of sports and military and MMA and boxing. And so I enjoy listening to those podcasts. I always can, can get something out of that. And one of the things that I think is really unique about him is his podcast is like three hours, sometimes four hours long. But if you listen to him, especially if it's somebody that, you know, is, that you're interested in, in, in whatever it is they're doing, whether it's sports or these different topics that you want to hear about, it's never boring. It's like I never thought I could sit there and listen to somebody have a three-hour conversation with somebody and, you know, not get bored with it. Have you watched the, oh, yeah. or listened yeah. to the Joe yeah, Rogan yeah, podcast absolutely. much? Always interesting. Uh, if there's a, here's a couple of suggestions related to that. If you've not uh, seen or heard the one with David Lee Roth, check that one out. Uh, a former lead singer of uh, Van Halen, of course. And then there's one with Ric Flair that's really entertaining. Of course, that guy's got a ton of stories. And then, you know, he's talked to Elon Musk and Tulsi Gabbard, you know, get into the more po political type stuff. But one of the things I like about it, Coach, is he's one of those guys where he just tells the truth. He gives you his truth and point of view, and he's not really concerned uh, about who gets offended by it. He's not trying to be offensive, but he just says what's on his mind, and I can appreciate that. But that's a pretty good part of that show. Yeah, but, definitely. But anyway, well, we're glad to have you with us. This is the Coach Grove Show here on WLAQ YouTube. And uh, you mentioned Joe Rogan. Are there any others that you're interested in? You know, I'll listen to some of the college football podcast every now and then. But, uh, you know, usually, uh, especially this time of the year, there's there's not too much for that. You know, I, I do my workouts at 630 in the morning. And so uh, I usually have my 80s hard rock music on there or, or, or something like that. So really not much time for talking. Y'all should, should both check out being being children of the '80s and '90s. The Zach to the Future podcast is, is one of my favorites. It's just about what a bad guy Zach Morris actually was on Saved by the Bell. <laughs> um, so that's that's a good one. And and I, Coach, I, I, my my son came to me all excited today about the new Mortal Kombat game because Jean Claude Van Damme is on that game. And if you didn't know, Johnny Cage was was modeled after Frank Dukes from Bloodsport, one of your favorite sports. That's right, movies. that's right. Yeah. So so that's it's it's come full circle. I was like, son, you don't know how much that means to us eighties children. So 
Well, we're glad to have you on the Coach Grove Show. Of course, one of the things we're going to do a little bit later on in the program is talk about the upcoming opponent, the Northwest Whitfield Bruins. And one of the things that's going to be taking place, you just had the first bye week. You'll have another one coming up later on in the season. But after this week, it's going to be time to get into region play, which it's really hard to believe, Ian, that we're getting to that point, isn't it? Absolutely. My goodness. Well, anything else you want to cover in this segment before we dive into to Northwest Whitfield? Uh, I'm ready to find out what's, what's going down against the Bruins now. All right. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take uh, another quick break here on the program. Then we're going to come back, and we're just going to dive in and start talking about the matchup coming up this Friday, just a couple of days away. Looking forward to it, and we'll return. This is the Coach Grove Show here on WLAQ, and we'll be back. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. All right, we welcome you back for a final segment here of the Coach Grove Show, and we're super glad to have you with us today here on the program. But, Coach, let's just go ahead and jump into our conversation about Northwest Whitfield. You had referenced earlier in our first segment of the show of having the opportunity on the bye week to go up there and watch them play North Murray. North Murray jumped to a big lead, and then somehow, some way, Northwest Whitfield, the Bruins, found a way to get back into that game. So uh, what did you see on the film when you got back and, and how that all all transpired. Well, so it went down 28 nothing with around seven minutes left in the third quarter. And, of course, as a, when you see the final score and didn't see the game, you're like, as a sports fan, one, you're like, well, how, the, how does that happen? You know, they must have got super conservative or, or this and that. But when you watch it, um, Northwest gets the ball, and, and after 28 nothing, they get a big they get a big play and score a touchdown, big touchdown pass. Uh, then the next series, they make them fumble sack, make them fumble, and then so they get a short field and, and go score. And then the next series, they actually stop them three and out, three and out. And then the next series, they tip a screen, catch it, pick six, back to the house. You know, and so just like that, they're back in the ball game. And then a couple of traded series, and they go down and they kick a field goal with one second left, and, you know, Northwest wins the game. So, wow. Well, well a comeback like that, what does that do for, for your team? I mean, you've got to believe you can do anything coming back from 28 points. Well, you know, it, it definitely, uh, you know, I'd rather them have, have, have lost or, or won extremely big against North Murray. So they're, you know, feeling, you know, sorry for themselves or, or, or really feeling themselves, you know. But, you know, so that just shows that these kids are going to have a, it's going to be a four quarter game and our kids better be prepared for that. And we should be prepared for that. But, but no, there's no lead that's going to be safe that's, uh, that, that we can, you know, relax. We got to keep the, the, the foot on the gas and keep going for four quarters. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the nuts and bolts of Northwest Whitfield. And, and I know you've been wa watching a lot of film on them. So who are some of the playmakers that, that will be calling their names coming up uh, on, on Friday night? Well, on offense, you know, they're a, uh, you know, they're a spread offense. You're going to get, again, 10 personnel and 11 personnel. So you'll have three wide receiver sets with a tight end. You'll have no tight end with, with four and five wide, wide receivers at, at times. Uh, the quarterback is a good player. They let him throw it around a lot. We got him at 61% pass, 39% run after we broke all the film down. And so he's a little sophomore, Gavin Nichols. Uh, he's extremely fast. He's a Johnny Manziel type player. And in, in, in that comeback, uh, he actually had it in those five drives there. He, there was three times where he scrambled around for 25 or more yards to ex extend plays. And so uh, he does a good job in their offense. Um, they're they're really simple. They know exactly what they're doing. They don't use a ton of formations, and you can tell those kids have played together for a while. And they have a there there's a there's a cohe cohesiveness there uh, in that offense. And so um, besides the quarterback, you know they got a number two Hudson Gray, who's a who's a senior wide receiver, six foot one eighty two. He's an army army commit, um, tough kid, really good receiver up front. It's going to stand out. There's an O lineman, number seventy seven Cade Combs. He's six five, three hundred pounds. Uh, their other linemen, you know, they got some 250s and 260s in there. 
And so those guys don't play both ways. You know, uh, Northwest is a is a four A team, and I after watching the film, I, I imagine they're a four A playoff team, is what I've been telling our kids. And so um, we'll have our we'll have our hands full with them. What are some when you're going up against somebody who improvises like that at the quarterback position? What are what are some of the things you have your players concentrating on when he extends those plays in order to prevent him from? burning you downfield well there's obviously some design quarterback runs for him you know out of the zone read inside zone with him pulling it out the backside reading our defensive end so you know every week with that we're gonna obviously we're gonna show the kids those plays in our in our team scripts at practice um but every week we do what's called no ball option as well so you know we'll run option plays at them and make sure the dive is taken care of make sure the quarterback is taken care of make sure the pitch man's taken care of and we do that every week regardless if we play a running quarterback or not so that's 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 built into our practice. The next thing is is we do a scramble drill with the D line, with O line protecting, and we put one of our fastest kids back there this week. Uh, we used Hendricks Jones, we used Jace Donaldson um, to emulate him, stay in the pocket a little bit, and let the rush come, and then try to. And so you know we have some specific techniques we try to use with the defensive ends and the in the D tackles to to keep him in the pocket and making sure he doesn't scramble out. So that's something we got we have to work on and, and, and make sure that we're prepared for. Yeah, I know one of the things that's super important about this game and every game that you've played so far is getting prepared for region play, which obviously doesn't begin until next Friday. So this is a, a big game for you in respect of just making sure uh, that you guys are ready for those particular games. So as head coach and, and the rest of your coaching staff, what are you guys looking for in terms of your team um, you know, getting better and developing and being ready to get into that part of the season that will count towards uh, playoffs and whatnot? Well, again, we want to play good quality opponents. You know, we want, to, we want to play tougher opponents than could possibly be on our region schedule. So the kids will be ready, we'll be battle tested, and, and, and that's what we really want once region starts. You know, we want to try to keep kids healthy. Uh, we want to practice. We, pra- we want to practice safe. You know, at, at our practices, we don't do anything crazy at practice. We have good, hard physical practices, but everything stays up. You know, we don't let our kids knife tackle or we don't cut each other at practice. You know, if we get kind of tangled up on someone's legs, we know to, to let go. So how we practice is going to help keep keep our players safe and, and, and full up for a full season. And so, you know, we're just we're just ready to, to get to Northwest. You know, we're going to take it one game at a time and we're going to handle business this Friday and then we're going to roll into region play, hopefully with, with all our bullets in the chamber. And we talked about the Bruins' offense a little bit. What uh, what kind of challenges do they present on the defensive side of the ball? All right, so they got uh, on the defensive side, their D-line is probably their strength. Um, you know, number 59, the nose guard, Adrian McDriegel, he's 5'8", 205. He's kind of a short, squatty guy, but he's quick. You know, they, they run a 3-4 defense, so what football terms we'd call an odd front defense. Uh, and they're slanting and moving, and, and they're bringing, uh, you know, backers from, from all over the place. So that's – you know, you got to work those things in practice, which we feel like we've done a good job with that. And secondary, uh, they play a lot of cover two and, and a lot of cover four. You know, they're, they're not a big man man coverage team. And so, um, you know, we've we practiced it and we, we feel like we have a good plan ready for, ready for that. Um, at linebacker number 18, Dawson Whitmore is a, is a downhill good player. And then Caden Ramsey and Cameron Collins, the two outside backers, both of those are also running backs. Um, but but they do a, do a good job of – of playing that 3-4 defense. Now, as far as your team improving throughout the season, you've played three games now. You've been with these guys for a while. So what would you say are the biggest areas that you feel like you guys have made some strides here in the first few weeks as you do approach region play? Well, we've gotten better just just understand the overall offensive defensive schemes. You know, each week they, we would learn something. We learned something from doing it good. We learned something from doing it wrong. And so just playing within our system – uh, and doing your specific specific job for the offense or defense, you know. So that's something we've gotten better at, playing our position better. Obviously, we've gotten better at tackling. You know, our tackling and our perimeter blocking with our receivers has is, is been a point of emphasis. We've really – I think we've really made strides there. And from the first week until uh, week three, I thought our special teams really, really improved. You know, we got, you know, some great kickoff coverage. We got some great kickoff returns, punt returns. And so – uh, if we can keep doing that and, and make teams have to play all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams, we're going we're gonna to end up having a good football team. This is your second road game. I, I'd like to know how you prepare differently when you're, when you're headed out on the road to keep your team in, in a routine. Well, we try to keep it as normal as possible, you know, and, and we have a laid out itinerary. And actually on, on away games, we're going to get the kids out of school at 2.30. And so they'll meet to the locker room at 2.45 and we'll immediately be in our, our pregame routine. 
And so that'll be passing out equipment. That'll be uh, position meetings. That'll be a little film. That'll be offensive, defensive, special teams, walkthroughs in the gym. And then uh, we'll eat our pregame meal, load up on the bus, and we'll go. And then uh, there'll be a lot of focus on the bus on the way there. Um, the boys don't talk. It's silent, and they're, and they're focused. And once we get there, uh, we get kind of get them going. We get, a, we get the boom box going. We got, we got one of our guys that's got a, about a, I don't know, about a three-foot tall and it'll it'll rattle the building now. So we get the music going and, and get them fired up once we get there, and and then get into the pregame routine. I gotta ask you, who gets to select the music that gets uh, them going? going there. <laughs> I, was, I was going there. I take suggestions from the boys, but uh, you know, I you know I know what they like, so I, I play them a little bit of what they like, and then I, I throw in a couple of my 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 stuff as well. So we get a little, uh, we still get a little Phil Collins in the air tonight, you know, right before <laughs> okay. kickoff. Okay. <laughs> Matt, Matt and I used to call a bunch of games at a certain stadium where we got a lot of Bob Seger. <laughs> that was an the, interesting uh, yeah, choice yeah. before a football game. <laughs> Still the same yeah. on a loop. I, yeah, I, don't know if the boys, I don't know if the boys get fired up for Bob Seger. Yeah. Yeah. We'll hold that out of the Darlington <laughs> Tigers pregame list. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is the Coach Grove Show here on WLAQ, our YouTube channel, also our Facebook page. And, uh, Coach, we're going to wind down here in just a couple of moments. But uh, one of the things we always want to do with this show is just encourage people to come out the games. Uh, the, the coaches and the players and everybody involved have just been working extremely hard to get prepared for the season. And, and you know, when you got road games like this, I know it's an hour drive to get up there, but it's great atmosphere for a game. And, uh, and the Tigers love to have the support. Right, Coach? Yeah, always. You know, the more the more purple and white we can have in the stands, you know, the boys are going to feed off that every week. If they see folks up and 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 getting excited about them playing, it's going to make them play harder. And then I don't know. Last week we were at Northwest, we couldn't get to the concession stand. They must have something good going on in that concession stand because it was twenty people deep from kickoff all the way to the third quarter. So uh, they may have a good concession stand, so that might be a secondary thing to, to go out there and see. <laughs> Matt's just going to tell everybody that you'll get to pass Bucky's on the way there and on the way back. Because uh, I don't know if you, you know, there's a there's a passion here for Bucky's. Like let let me just say this. We're not going to pass Bucky's on the way there and the way back. We're going to stop at Bucky's on the way there and on the way back. <laughs> I, I, I I've got, that, I've got no that on my, int my itinerary. That, that's, on the, that's on the docket for sure, man. No doubt about it. But. So, so, Coach, I did want to ask you, you know, you talk about these young men's schedule, getting out early on Fridays. How, what, what measures do you take to help them stay on top of their academics? I know how important those are everywhere, but at Darlington, there's a lot of pride in, in the academic side. Well, me and Coach King, every every two weeks, we do a we do a grade check, and we had one last week, and so we monitor those kids, and and I, the goal is A and B average at all times, and so we're on top of that. You know, they have opportunities. Our schedule is pretty pretty unique at Darlington because there's the kids usually have about an hour and a half to two hours of they'll have a free period, and then teachers have office hours that they have to meet, and so those kids can go get help or you know get some extra tutoring at any time, and so. You know that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that we know that they know we're on top of it. You know, and we have a little we have a little list that I call the distraction list. And if you're failing a class, then it's a distraction to the football team. And so we give the kids a little extra love for that distraction list. And so we had a couple of guys that that were failing uh, a couple of classes, but we had end up having 36 kids on the roster that that are all A's and B's right now. You know, and so and 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 only I think 42 of them. Uh, you know, not failing anything, you know. So, you know, that's a good that's a good thing, and, and we're on top of it. We're going to get those kids help when they need it. Well, guys, it's been a lot of fun to get together and talk some Darlington football here, but we got to wind down as our time is running out. But, Coach, we just want to take the opportunity and thank you for coming out here to the station and, and, and being a part of your show, the Coach Grove <laughs> Show. It's always a pleasure to get to talk to you, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Go Tigers. All right, go Tigers, man. Nothing like a Tiger on Friday night. Can't wait. Well, folks, we appreciate you tuning in. This has been the Coach Grove Show, week four of the season edition, and we're going to wrap things up. But uh, go Tigers, and hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. 
Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of the Coach Groves Show. We invite you to join us again next week as we discuss all things Darlington football with head coach Wayne Groves. Go Tigers!